Clearwater Historical Society unveiled the Discover Clearwater mural in February 2022 to celebrate our unique story and beautiful natural assets. Commissioned in 2021 and created by mural artist Tim Boatwright and the Vitali brothers, let us guide you through some local history. Up top is Discover Clearwater in classic postcard style typography. Tourism has always been very important to our local economy. We have the most beautiful white sandy beaches, glowing sunsets, and so much more to offer visitors from around the world. The iconic Pier 60 is a centerpiece of Clearwater Beach, extending 1,089 feet into the Gulf. One of the best equipped fishing piers in Florida, it offers great fishing, shopping, entertainment, and incredible sunsets. The beautiful heron represents our abundant nature and wildlife. In the lower half of the mural, we meet Captain James P. McMullen, one of the earliest settlers in the Tampa Bay area. By 1848, he and his Florida Cracker family became successful citrus growers and cattlemen who owned great parts of the land that eventually became known as Pinellas County. McMullen Booth Road is a major highway named to honor the pioneering clan. What do most Olympic sailors have in common? They started their competitive sailing careers racing the International Opti Dinghy Sailboat, designed in Clearwater. Its forerunner, the Optimist Pram, was the vision of Clark Mills, who in 1947 was asked by Major Clifford McKay to design a small boat for junior sailors. It took off and became popular around the globe. In 2017, innovative boat builder Clark Mills was inducted into the U.S. Sailing Hall of Fame. Mrs. Christine Wigfall Morris was the first African-American to become a librarian in Clearwater, Florida. She attended a segregated high school in Clearwater, studied home economics and English at Bethune-Cookman University, and inspired generations of local children to enjoy reading. The ball player is Bobby Forbes, the youngest player for the renowned Clearwater Bombers. He made the Bombers in 1941 at age 14. From there, he became one of the most feared left-handed hitters in fast-pitch softball. In their heyday, the Bombers won 10 national titles and finished second eight other times. They won over 4,000 games, placed 24 members in the National Softball Hall of Fame, and appeared in 45 national tournaments, more than any other team. The team traveled throughout the United States, Canada, Cuba, and Puerto Rico. Bobby Forbes, who played right field and first base, was later drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates. The old-style golfer represents the Clearwater Country Club. The first nine holes and the clubhouse opened January 26, 1921, and Mrs. Ellen Simons hit the first shot down the fairway beyond the first bunker. Two years later, the completed 18-hole golf course opened, divided by a railroad and creek that were incorporated as features on several holes making the day on the links even more challenging. Famous celebrities, including Babe Ruth and Bob Hope, enjoyed golfing at the country club, and the course was among the first to allow women to play. Clearwater Jazz Holiday has brought musical stars to Clearwater every October since 1980. Greats like Herbie Mann, Dave Brubeck, Buddy Guy, George Benson, Chicago, the Avet Brothers, UB40, Sheryl Crow, Michael McDonald, and Kenny Loggins. The list goes on. The Capitol Theater, now the Nancy and David Bilheimer Capitol Theater, built in 1921, has provided the very best in performing arts. A century of patrons have enjoyed musical acts and entertainment at this cultural gem in downtown Clearwater. From vaudevillian Sally Rand to B.B. King, Chris Christopherson, Don McLean, Lucinda Williams, and Winona Judd, the acclaimed and historic theater puts on a great show. Peacocks are native to India, Asia, and Africa, not Florida. They can be found in the Greenbrier neighborhood in Clearwater. 
descended from the Seville Peacock Farm, a long-gone tourist attraction on Gulf to Bay Boulevard, closed in the 1930s. The peacocks were raised for their fashionable tail feathers, especially popular in hats in the Roaring Twenties. The warm and humid Florida climate is perfect for growing gladioli and made Clearwater one of the leading producers of the gorgeous and colorful plant. First planted in 1926, tens of thousands of acres were cultivated, making Florida the gladiolus capital of the world. Cut before they bloomed, the glads were sorted, packaged, and shipped across the U.S. and Europe to arrive in full bloom for the florist. Just imagine the beauty. Our subtropical climate also proved ideal for citrus. First brought to the New World by Christopher Columbus, oranges and grapefruits have been farmed commercially in Florida since the mid-1800s, when pioneer Odette Felipe established the county's first citrus grove. Pinellas became one of the top citrus-producing counties in Florida. Henry Plant, the famous Central and West Florida developer of the late 1800s, helped put Clearwater on the map. His standard gauge railroad through Pinellas County prompted passenger travel and attracted wealthy northern guests to his grand resort hotels, the Bellevue Biltmore and the Tampa Bay Hotel. His son, Morton F. Plant, donated and raised money for the city's first hospital in 1914. We love sports in the Tampa Bay area, and that includes the Philadelphia Phillies Major League Baseball team. The Phillies have held spring training in Clearwater since the 1940s. Red, bright pink, yellow, and orange hibiscus are everywhere you look in Clearwater at almost any time of year. They are native to warm, temperate, subtropical, and tropical climates like Clearwater. And for that, we are thankful. If you love local history, the Clearwater Historical Museum and Cultural Center has much to discover. Welcome to Clearwater, Florida.